Is there anybody there? Uh, who are you? Okay, T, are you a ghost? What are you then? Ah, okay, so you're a writer. So that means you're T the writer. Hey, that's right. I'm T the Writer. I'm from the T the Writer YouTube channel where I sit here in front of a shelf full of gaming stuff and tell people all my D&D stories. Alright, excellent. So, uh, what does the T stand for anyway? Tubular. Adventure game. He's solving riddles great and small. Adventure game. Adventure games he loves them all. Every day is a new quest. Exploring north, south, east, and west. Point and click to find the answers that we seek. Adventure game geek. Dark Fall 2 Lights Out is the sequel to Dark Fall the Journal and is again developed by Jonathan Bokes, the one-man atmosphere-making machine. A demo of his latest game Silent Night is available on Steam, where you can revisit Northfield Church from the Lost Crown but in the third dimension. The original Dartfall was set around an abandoned train station, and this time we're going to be exploring a lighthouse near the coastal fishing town of Trey Warthen. We're woken up by a knock on the door. I wonder who that could be? Marion, he says he knows best, but what does he know? Who's this mysterious guy? I don't remember him from the first time I played this game. <coughs> well, we're actually playing the director's cut version, which makes several changes to the original, which we'll see more of later. Bring James home, I said. That lighthouse is cursed. The only other person we meet around here is the enigmatic Dr. Demarion. I have a job for you. A job of the utmost urgency. Will you accept it? No way, leave me alone. I don't take jobs from creepy disembodied heads. Fine, but one way or the other, you will listen to my words. Go and ponder, but do not leave me waiting for long. It is a chilling night. Okay, I shall go and ponder this. Alright, I'll do it. When you talk to Damarian, you can choose different dialogue options, but they all lead to the same result, and even the exact same responses. A mild deception. There is often bad talk of the lighthouse in this town. A mild deception. There is often bad talk of the lighthouse in this town. Our character's name is Benjamin Parker, and he's a cartographer. In other words, he makes maps. Making maps? What's the point? Those sands are always changing. What's the point? I'll have you know that I learnt all about the art of map making from the great Wally B feed of Scab Island. <laughs> Only sissies use maps. Maps are very, very important. Our diary tells us how we came to be here, but something strange happens while we're reading it. The first time I played this, I had no idea what was going on. Turns out this is a flashback where you're able to interact with your environment and even take things with you like this strange square object, which if you're old enough you might recognize as a floppy disk. This story takes place in 1912 however, so it's an object that's out of time. There's a word for that, what's it called again? I believe the word you're searching for is anachronism. Oh, that's right. Thanks, T. No problem, G. This flashback scene is a good example of how many things in this game are there purely for the sake of world building, meaning you can look at them but they have no essential use. My adventuring instincts always assume that items are there for a reason, so I expect the pictures we see in this old-fashioned slide projector to have some significance, 
Or we need to collect ingredients from this recipe to make a Cornish pasty. But no, this is all just icing on the Darkfall cake. Anyway, let's sail on to Fetch Rock and the Lighthouse. Both three men dwell upon the island to keep the lamp alight. As we steered under the lead, we caught no glimmer in the night. This is an excerpt from the Ballad of Flannan Isle on which the story is based, a poem by Wilfred Gibson about three lighthouse keepers who mysteriously vanished. Approaching the lighthouse, we can look up at it from various angles as it looms above us. Right now, the lights are out and we have to figure out how to turn them on. I thought this game was called Darkfall Lights Out, not Lights On. As we enter the lighthouse, we find that it is haunted by the shadows of the past. If we pick up any of these old-fashioned phones, we can also hear ghostly voices. It's been waiting for you. Hello? Why are you looking for us? There's no, There's no hope for us. For us. Who is this? Hey, it's just me again. How's the review going? T? That was you all along? Yeah, were you scared? Nah, nothing scares me. Except maybe Phantasmagoria 2. I don't suppose you know what the hell's going on, huh? Isn't it obvious? You're a psycho killer. The main puzzle to solve here is finding the code to open this door, which leads to the room where one of the lighthouse keepers called Drake once stayed. Apparently he went mad and now his restless spirit wanders the lighthouse, looking for living souls to devour. One by one, up the stairs. He's coming for your soul. Despite all these ghostly goings on, we continue to climb the stairs. At the top of the lighthouse is, not surprisingly, a light. You can't turn it on, but you can blow the foghorn and ring the bell outside. What was the point of that? No point at all, just the joy of blowing foghorns and ring bells. What's more intriguing though is not what's at the top of the lighthouse, it's what's underneath it. There's something under that old rock. They call it fetch for a reason. We're lured into a dark cave by a whispering voice. Over here. I don't know about this, sounds like the Predator. <laughs> Suddenly the walls glow with strange symbols and we experience a funky feeling. Nothing seems to have happened at first, but then we find that the cave is full of water and the landscape outside has changed. Yes, that's right fellow adventurers, we've traveled back to the future. This is my favorite aspect of the game as we get to explore the same location in different time periods. The year is now 2004 and the lighthouse has been turned into a tourist attraction, complete with gift shop which is of course locked up like a safe. Shouldn't they be letting tourists in to buy stuff? Why is there a code to open this door anyway? Because it's an adventure game. Oh, that's right. Thanks again, T. No problem, G. I hope not all of this is face cam, because I would look fucking ridiculous just sitting at this desk the whole time. To find the door code, we need to play around with this console displaying the Fetch Rock wildlife, which is another of the added features in the director's cut, along with the drunk geezer we met earlier. Oh, last of the grog. Never enough. Never enough to make me forget. The console displays an error message just like in Esselmir and the Five Magical Gifts which I recently reviewed. This isn't just an ordinary message though. Hold it right there, Adventure Game Geek. This is the spoiler police. If you give away the solution to this puzzle, you'll be in direct violation of spoiler code XB71. Okay, okay, I promise I won't give anything away. Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. Anyway, having entered the gift shop, we can browse all the souvenirs on display, including books, postcards, and various handmade ornaments. My personal favorite being a mug that says, I survived a day at Fetch Rock Lighthouse. We can also listen to some CDs of local music.
Is it my imagination or did the cash register just display the number 666? Nah, that must be a coincidence. Someone must have bought enough copper seahorses and metal sand pipettes to add up to 666 pounds. Let's move on to what was once the boiler room, which now has a mannequin on display. Nothing unusual here. Hey T, did you see that mannequin move? Sorry, what'd you say? Now its fingers are twitching. Uh, no, I don't think so. It's probably just your imagination. Now I'm gonna go back to this Cornish music CD. This time our search of the lighthouse reveals more information on the three keepers and the mystery surrounding their disappearance. The top of the lighthouse now displays an exhibition of paintings by Matt Clark, who you may recognize as the developer of Barrow Hill. There's also another mannequin that doesn't appear to move, and if we look through the binoculars we can see a symbol with a number. There are several of these hidden around the place which reminds me of Riven. The most important object to find are these EVP glasses, which allows us to see supernatural phenomena at certain points. Please, help us. You can also use them to teleport between different time periods. Now we appear to be in prehistoric times, although there's no sign of any cavemen. If you're looking for a good caveman adventure, I suggest Echo Secrets of the Lost Cavern. In this time period, we find another of those floppy disks. What's that word again? Anachronism. Right, so the biggest anachronism of all is a metal capsule we find in a cave, with futuristic symbols and the words Deos and Malachi. What do these mean? Well, maybe we'll find out when we travel further into the future where we discover some sort of underwater research facility. Not quite sure what they're researching, but there's a glowing body in here. We can search the rooms of the science team members, which all have their own photo IDs. Hey, isn't that you, T? Yeah, that's right. I did some research there once. So, uh, what's with the glowing guy? That's classified. <laughs> Ugh, that came out of nowhere. The crew rooms tell us more about their lives, like this guy Ivan, who's obviously a sci-fi fan and has a model of what looks like an ATST. Hmm, I wonder what that symbol means. I'm sure it has nothing to do with that metal capsule we found earlier. There's also a poster on the wall here for a new adventure game called The Dowton Experiment, which I'm looking forward to along with the Lost Crown Black and Rock. One of the rooms has a disembodied hand on display, which could have come from that creepy mannequin we saw earlier. It's true, its finger just twitched. T, did you see that? Chaotic evil demon lord of natural disasters, storms, and trolls. That's kind of cool. In the kitchen we find the aftermath of Ivan's birthday party. There's some fortune cookies here with some cryptic messages like Beware the false prophet from the stars and Seek Malachi, he knows all. So who is this Malachi? Halt! Spoiler police again! I think this review has gone far enough, step away from the fortune cookies. Anyway, in summary I feel like Dartfall 2 has a lot of the right ingredients for a great adventure, but ultimately falls short. I appreciate some of the in-game references like Polly White, who was a ghost hunter in the first Darkfall and also plays a role here, though it's quite different between the two versions. In the director's cut, you look through this keyhole and hear Polly talk to you, but you don't respond. Did you make that noise? Are you Benjamin Parker? In the original, she comes right up to the keyhole wearing a pair of EVP glasses. Are you Benjamin Parker? This time you can tap once for yes and twice for no. I know who you are, 
Benjamin Parker, and I know what you did. Hey, wait a sec. What did I do? Fart? Hey, I know that's you, T. Hey, G. I see you've reached the end of your review. Indeed I have. So, what score do you think we should give this game? Let's roll a dice and find out. Two out of ten. Really, a two? It's better than that. Let's roll the dice and find out. Two. Is it two all the damn time? Jeez, let's try it, everyone. Here's another D10. Yes, I keep dice in my drawer. Don't judge me. 10 out of 10. Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. You fucking asshole. <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean it, Steven. Uh, let's roll the dice and find out. Shit, it went off the desk. <laughs>